Uh, option. Ay po, ako po si Dr. Duenas, no? Ang gagawin po natin ngayon ay i-examine po natin yung chat niyo, no? So paikay po natin kayo dito sa bed. Dito po yung ating ulo. Tapos pakihubad na po yung ating t-shirt. Pwedeng ipatong na lang dito. Okay, so dito po ang ating ulo. Tapos ang kamay po natin dito lang sa side. Tapos uh, ito po flat lang po muna. No? So the proper position for the abdominal examination, the patient should be in supine. Okay? And then there should be adequate exposure. And then the arms of the patient should be at the sides. Initially, the patient should, the lower extremity should be flat. Huh? So, uh, so there should be adequate exposure. The adequate exposure is, is uh, it, should, it should be from the subcostal margin down to the symphysis pubis should be exposed. Huh? Okay, so no problem with males. They can be asked to remove the upper garment. For females, you have to cover the breast area. Huh? So now we will start with our uh, inspection of the abdomen. So first is we get the size of the abdomen. We measure the abdominal circumference or the abdominal ear. No? So we pass a so we pass a tape measure at the level of the umbilicus. So it is uh, 78 cm in the mid-clavicular, uh, in the umbilical uh, umbil area, okay? And then when you measure it, it should be exact, ha? hindi yung parang nagsusukat ka ng, ng kustor, na tailor na naglalagay ng allowance. It should be exact, no? So that is your abdominal gear, no? and it's very important to measure that, especially if you are uh, have patients who have ascites, uh, you measure the abdominal gear every day because it will uh, help you to say that you are diuresing the patient and then that there is a reduction in the size of the abdominal gear no? or abdominal circumference. No? Next is to check for the, uh, the shape of the abdomen. So you look tangentially. Okay. So you draw an imaginary line from the cycoid process down to the symphysis pubis. If it goes beyond the imaginary line, then that's a globular abdomen. And if it goes beyond, goes below the imaginary line, then you have a, a, you have a scaphoid abdomen. No? So you have to be aware what are the uh, very important for you to know also the, what are the different causes of your globular abdomen uh, or a protuberant abdomen. So usually we follow the mnemonics, uh, the five F. No? So what are the five Fs? No? So una, uh, fetus, no? pagkabuntis, no? or uh, pagkapregnant, ang, ang presente. Tapos fat, ob obesity, and then your uh, fluid pagka may ascites. Tapos pagka uh, uh, platus, uh, pagka air, pagka puno ng hangin, no? pwedeng platus. No? And then uh, tumor. No? Uh, tumor, hindi naman tumor, no? para maging F, kundi fatal. No? So, kaya 5 Fs yun. For us to remember, the what are the possible causes of a globular abdomen. No? So, fat, uh, fetus, fat, fetus, fluid, platus, fetal. Uh, so those are the different causes of a globular abdomen. Next is you check the skin. So check the skin if there's any lesions, any scars. No? For example, there are operative scars from appendic appendectomy. If the patient had a uh, uh, if there any any operative scar, you have to describe. You have to describe. Huh? Where is the location? Okay. 
check if there's any striae. Okay. So there's no striae. So the skin is brown in color, no lesions, no scars, no striae, uh, no uh, subcutaneous blood vessels. Okay. No. Uh, uh, the, then you describe the umbilicus. The umbilicus is inverted. So you have to describe whether it's inverted, it's flat, uh, it's uh, it's everted or flat or inverted. No? So the normal it should be inverted. And uh, there's no uh, signs of infection, no discharge, no, no stones. So the umbilicus is normal. You check if there's any uh, hematoma in the abdomen. Huh? We have such what we call uh, uh, Callen sign and your uh, Gray Turner sign. Huh? So Callen sign is we see the hematoma over the peri umbilical area, while your Gray Turner sign is uh, in the uh, in the at the sides at the flanks. Huh? That's your uh, signs of hemorrhagic pancreatitis. Okay. Then you will have you also try to check if there's any nodules. Okay, so try to check if there's any nodules. Uh, if some sometimes there are nodules in the per umbilical in the umbilical area, which may be a sign of your what we call your sister Mary Joseph nodule. No? So the patient doesn't have that. No? So check if there's any caput medusae, any uh, engorged vessels. There's no caput medusae. Then you also try to check if there's any visible uh, pulsations, no visible pulsations, no visible peristalsis. Okay, so you also you can check uh, tangentially for any visible pulsations or any visible peristalsis. None. The abdomen is symmetrical, meaning equal on both sides, and uh, there is no localized bulging, no bulging of the flanks. There's no. Uh, localized bulging okay so that's for inspection now we go to your auscultation so unlike other physical examinations where in the orders inspection palpation percussion auscultation for the abdomen after inspection we go directly to auscultation why because we want to hear uh, unadulterated bowel sounds huh? because if you uh, start with palpation and it it can it goes to hyperperistalsis. You you don't you won't get any more accurate bowel sounds. So that's why we uh, listen. We auscultate first before we do any palpation. Huh? So so what we do is to first try to hear the general tympanic uh, tympanitic sound, uh, tympanism. Okay. So so we use the diaphragm because the diaphragm is for because bubble sounds are high pitch sounds so we, we use the diaphragm okay so we listen we start from the uh, from the bottom at the right at the right lower quadrant okay and then listen for the bubble sounds count the number of bubble sounds at the right lower quadrant huh? for a full minute
Okay? Okay, so the normal bowel sounds is 5 to 35. Uh, anything below 5 is hypoactive bowel sounds. Anything above 35 is hyperactive bowel sounds. So for when you are counting the bowel sounds, you cannot count it 30 seconds and then multiply it by 2. Why? Because bowel sounds are highly irregular sounds. Uh, for the heart, sometimes we can do it if we're really in a hurry, no? But we don't encourage it. But for the bowel sounds, you really have to count full minute because bowel sounds are highly irregular sounds. Okay? Next is we listen for uh, brewy. We listen for aortic brewy and your renal artery brewy. Uh, and also your iliac artery brewy. So we listen at the epigastric area. Okay? For your aortic brewy which may indicate abdominal aortic aneurysm, okay? And then we listen at the right and left upper quadrant uh, for renal artery brewery. And then we listen for the iliac artery brewery, okay? So any brewery in the epigastric area it may indicate abdominal aortic aneurysm. If there is brewy on the right and left upper quadrant, it may indicate uh, it is a renal artery brewy and it may indicate renal artery stenosis. Okay? So also for the renal artery stenosis, you can you also use your bell. Huh? So bell. Okay, for the aortic only diaphragm because uh, they are systolic always, no? But for renal artery, they can be both systolic and diastolic brewy. So we use your bell and your you use your diaphragm and your bell. Okay. Okay, so that is for auscultation. So for auscultation, normal active bowel sounds. No? For example, I counted uh, 25. So 25. Uh, bowel sounds per minute, that's normal. The normal is 5 to 35. No uh, brewy heard over the epigastric right and left upper quadrant, right and left lower quadrant. So that's for your auscultation. Then we go to palpation. So for palpation, the first thing to do before you proceed to palpation, you tell the, ask the patient, is there anything painful? May masakit ba sa Okay, so if it's if the patient says none, you can start anywhere. Huh? But if the patient says that there is something that's painful, for example, he points at the epigastric area, you have to examine that area last. Why? Because if you examine that area first and the patient goes into guarding, then it may it will alter your uh, examination. Huh? It will affect your examination. Huh? So guarding is can be both voluntary and involuntary. If it's voluntary, if you ask the patient to do relaxation techniques like breathing through the mouth, breathing deeply through the mouth, the abdomen should should soften, uh, or any other relaxation techniques. Okay, but if it's involuntary guarding, even if you do relaxation techniques, the abdomen will still be firm and sometimes bored like rigidity. Okay. Okay, so, so, walang masakit? Okay, so we start with our palpation. So for palpation, we start with our light palpation, one hand light palpation. So the depression of the abdomen abdomen is only light, around one centimeter. Huh? So you can do it this way. Okay, just feeling for any superficial tenderness and superficial masses. Okay, so just light. Uh, that's your light palpation. Uh, then you have your uh, you have your reinforced palpation or two hand or or double hand palpation. So this time you use two hands. So and then you uh, you you the deep palpation. It's either one hand deep palpation or two hand deep palpation. Uh, so one hand deep palpation. You press it deeply. So it's the same as your Light palpation, but, but this time deep, more deep. Huh? Okay, so go around and palpate. 
So make sure that you cover all the regions, all the quadrants. From time to time, you try to ask, uh, you ask if there's anything, if it's tender. Okay, that's one hand deep palpation. Then you have your two hand deep palpation or reinforced palpation. Where in the hand the, at, uh, below is for feeling, while the hand above is for pressure. Huh? So this time it's more deep. Huh? Okay, so again, you go around. So this is two hand deep palpation okay okay then after that you do your bimanual palpation you palpate for the liver the spleen and the kidneys so for the liver you can do it with one hand huh? so you start below the umbilicus okay going up to feel the edge of the liver okay Okay, and then if you happen to feel it, you measure how many breaths, uh, how many uh, finger breath, breath, breaths below the subcostal margin, no? And also try to feel for the edge and the surface. How how do you describe? Is it the, is the edge sharp? Is is the surface coarse? And uh, are there any nodule? Is it nodular uh, when you feel it? Okay. So that is for the liver. So you start going towards the direction of the head. Okay, and then go up and feel. Huh? You don't need to push, put your hand at the back because your liver is on the anterior. Okay, so no need to know. Now for the spleen, th that's when you do your two hand. You place your hand at the back and then palpate for the spleen. Huh? On the left upper quadrant. Okay, so then you have your kidneys, for the kidneys again, huh? you palpate, you, uh, you can use bimanual palpation to palpate for the kidneys. Okay, so that, ka. <laughs> Okay, so you try to, and you can ask the patient to take a deep breath, tingnan malalim, and try to feel, if you can feel the lower border of the kidneys. Okay, so that's bimanual palpation okay uh, then so uh, so for reporting so for pal on palpation the abdomen is soft non tender no organomegaly or no hepatosplenomegaly no the kidneys are not palpable okay that's the report for your palpation okay then lastly you have your percussion so percussion so again uh, this is the, the one on the surface is fleximeter. The one you use to hit is your flexor. Huh? So this time for the abdomen, the, there should be general tympanism. Huh? General tympanism. Okay. Okay. So you, you so you can do it horizontally or vertically or so you go around. Huh? As long as you cover all quadrants and all regions. Huh? So I will do it vertically. So press on it deeply and then I will do it without so that it will produce the sound. Yeah. Yeah. Can you lift? Can you can you hear that? And then go down. Okay, so this is your flexor at the force comes from the wrist huh? and you use your middle finger huh? so your target is your distal interphalangeal joint of the fleximeter okay so you do it that way or you can do it from top to bottom so you can also do it that way as long as you cover all the quadrants huh? Or you can do it, you go around. So 
No, it should be generally thin paniti. Okay. Next is to for for percussion, we check for your liver span. So for the liver span, the first thing to do is to check the lower border of your of your liver. Huh? So you start below the umbilicus. Going up. If you're not sure, you can go up and down. that okay that's your lower border of the liver then you start at the uh, third ICS so so here below there's a transition of sound from tympanitic to dullness huh? then here transition of sound from resonance to dullness huh? okay Mark that again. Okay, then measure. It's uh, six centimeter. Huh? So the normal liver span is six to twelve centimeter along the midclavicular line. So it's still normal. Huh? Okay. Then next is to check the trope space. Huh? So checking for splenomegaly so for the splenomegaly you have to identify the uh, borders of your trough space so the borders of your trough space is 6 rib anteriorly anterior axillary line laterally and subcostal margin on the inferior so that, that is your trough space huh? so that's it here huh? so this is your fifth ICS of there so this is the 6 rib so there, huh? so you you percuss that. So it's tympanitic, no? And then ask the patient to take a different hemolyte. So it should still be tympanitic. Huh? So meaning there is the trough space is intact. Huh? There is no obliteration of your trough space. If there is obliteration of trough space, that means that there is splenomegaly. Okay? So after, so we're finished with, so we'll report the percussion as, so percussion, tympanitic all over. Liver span is 6 cm along the midclavicular, the right midclavicular line. Intact trough space, no splenomegaly. Okay, so that's for percussion. Okay, finally, we do your special exams. So, for the special exams, uh, for the special exams, we, we start first with your uh, test for appendicitis. So, test for appendicitis, you have your uh, McBurney's, okay? McBurney's sign. So, there are different signs for your appendicitis. You have your McBurney's, you have your Bloomberg's, your Rob Sings your uh, jar tenderness or Merkel sign, then your SOAS and your obturator. So a total of six signs. No? So first we start with your uh, McBurney's sign. So McBurney's sign is you palpate at the McBurney's, at the McBurney's area. So McBurney's area is you draw a line from the umbilicus to the anterior superior iliac spine one-third of that, that is where your McBurney's point is. So, may masakit ba? Wala. Okay, so that's your McBurney sign. Now, once you are there, you do your Bloomberg sign, also for your rebound tenderness. So, you push down and then pull it out rapidly. Okay, so may masakit. So, so if it's, there's no pain, that's normal. But, if the patient says masakit, you will ask which is more painful the one when I press or when I release so to be a positive rebound tenderness there should the pain should be greater 
upon the release. Uh, so the pain is when you remove your hand. That is your rebound tenderness. No? Then you have your jar tenderness. There are three types of uh, two ways to produce your jar tenderness. You ask the patient to cough three times. <coughs> okay, may masakit ba? Okay, so that is your jar tenderness. The other one is on standing position, you ask the patient to tiptoe and then drop forcefully. Uh, if there's pain in the right lower quadrant, that is positive for jar or Merkel sign. Uh, then you have your Robsing sign. So you press here, you ask the patient where is the pain. Wala. So if there's pain on the right lower quadrant while pushing on the left or palpating the left, then there is, that is positive for rope sinks. And also when you remove it, there will also be pain in the right lower quadrant. So that is your rope sinks test. Then you have your psoas. So your psoas, you apply pressure above the knee and ask the patient to flex the hips and the knee. So baluktot yung ito ito itiklop mo itong tuhod mo habang iniipit ko habang pinipigil ako sige okay so may masakit dito wala so so that's your SOA sign ha? for it to be positive while we are play, applying pressure above the knee and then you ask the patient to flex the hips and the knee if there's a pain in the right lower quadrant that means that it is positive for SOA sign then finally obturator sign you flex at the knee the hips and at the knee and do your internal rotation. Huh? That is your obturator sign. So if it's there's pain in the right lower quadrant, that is positive for obturator. Huh? So all of these tests indicate that there is, these are signs of peritonitis. Huh? So it's not exclusively for appendicitis. Huh? Anything that causes peritonitis, it can produce these signs. For example, in patients who have ruptured ectopic pregnancy, this will also produce these signs. Na? Okay, next is your uh, uh, test for acute cholecystitis. So, the test for acute cholecystitis is what we call Murphy sign. So, Murphy sign is we apply uh, your hand on the right lower quadrant and then ask the patient to take a deep breath and simultaneously you push in. Na? So, again, so, sabi ko sa inyo malalim. Ha? Okay, hindi malalim. Okay, so you push in while the patient is taking a deep breath. To be positive for Murphy sign, there should be an arrest in the inspiration. Meaning, because of the pain, the patient cannot complete the inspiration. And so, there, there is an arrest in the inspiration. It's not the pain that makes it positive, but it is the arrest in inspiration that makes it positive Murphy sign. Okay? Then you have your test for ascites. So test for ascites, you have two. You have your fluid wave and your shifting dullness. So for fluid wave, so you ask the patient to put the hand here and then your hands here to pin and then you tap here. Okay? So if there's fluid, you have you feel you will feel that there's a tap on the opposite hand. Okay, that is your fluid wave. Huh? Another thing is shifting dullness. So shifting dullness, you uh, so in supine you palpate, you percuss, and then ask the patient to go to the lateral decubitus. There should be a shift in the fluid. Huh? So when it's huh? so percuss. So if there is fluid, you expect the tympanitic area to be at the center, where there is no. Remember that the fluid will go to the dependent portion. Uh, so above, tympanitic, below, per, uh, done. Uh, okay, so, and then ask the patient to go to the decubitus position, go to the side. Okay, then wait for the fluid to go down. So, so if there is fluid, the, the fluid will go to the dependent portion, go to the lower abdomen. Uh, so when you percuss, So, tympanitic above, dal below. Huh? Because the fluid is down there. Okay? 
Okay, so that's for as IT. So finally, our test for your costo uh, for uh, post vertebral angle angle tenderness. So tayo tayo na tapos talikod ka sa kanila. Okay, so your post vertebral angle tenderness is to check for acute pyelonephritis. So you place your hand here on the post vertebral angle and then hit it with the heel of your hand here. Huh? And then go to the other side. If there is pain. If there is pain, then that is positive for postovertebral angle tenderness. It is a sign for acute pyelonephritis. Okay, so that ends our abdominal examination.